in the last stream, we were working, of course, on getting our Fusion Control computer finally up and running. And we had a little bit of a mishap in my understanding of how the Fusion Control computer worked. I was under the impression that you had to get 320 million redstone flux per tick into the Fusion Controller every single time you wanted to make a piece of platinum. Thankfully, that was not the case. And we ended up managing to get uh, quite a bit of platinum fairly easily. And in fact, I think we could go ahead and if we wanted to, uh, you know, request like another 30 platinum and, and that really wouldn't take too long. It does use that 320 million right out of the gate. But then after that, it just uses kind of a passive 8,000 redstone flux per tick to turn the beryllium and the wolframium into platinum, which of course we're hopefully going to use today to make a quantum quarry. Because once again, if we want to progress on forward into the pack, we need mana infused ore. So if we're going to get that mana infused ore, we need the quantum quarry. I'm going to bookmark both the actuators and the actual quarry itself. As I mentioned in the last stream, I don't think that the odds of getting mana infused ore are very high. And so despite the fact that the quantum quarry is actually very fast, and you'll see that when we set it up in a minute here, and despite the fact that it does use 20,000 redstone flux per tick, we might actually need to get multiple quantum quarries going at the same time if we really want to speed up the, uh, the rate at which we get the mana infused ore. So I do also think it's probably not going to be a bad idea to teach our system how to make some of the stuff required for the quantum quarry, especially the quantum actuators. Again, if we're going to make multiple uh, quantum quarries, we could need, you know, 6, 12, 18, 24 quantum actuators. And uh, I think it'd be a little easier if we could just you know, have our system make those for us. And the recipe really doesn't seem all too bad here. I believe we can if we wanted to teach our system how to make end rods, which I think I will do. We could fly around the end to try and find these, but uh, I think for the most part, uh, we have the blaze rods and we can make the popped chorus fruit by just uh, running it through a smelter. And I'm hopeful that we can do that in... I was going to say I'm hopeful we can do that in the electric furnace, but for whatever reason, oh no, we totally can, right? Yeah, we can do it down here. That is perfect. All right, so we'll encode that as well. And then what else do we need? We need the platinum pickaxe. So we'll go back to regular here. We'll encode that. I will smelt up the platinum. Our system doesn't know how to make stone burn. We could teach it how to make stone burn, but at the same time, I'm also fairly tempted to just, also we should definitely be doing this in here. I'm fairly tempted to just, to just make a bunch of stone burn. It's not very difficult to make. And uh, our resonator is kind of just right behind the system here. And we don't really use it too much. So I don't know if it's necessarily worth, you know, spending the time trying to, uh, trying to automate it. Where is my, or where are my, I should say, uh, speed upgrades? I believe that they are over in the overworld. Like right here. Yeah, they totally are. Nice. All right. So I'll throw those in. Over there, that's hopefully going to get us quite a bit of stone burn fairly quickly. And then at that point, I think we're pretty much good to go on the uh, the quantum quarry actuators, right? Yeah, our system already knows how to make advanced alloys. We just taught it how to make popped chorus fruit and uh, the end rods there. Uh, as for the regular quantum quarry, again, our system knows how to make end stone. It knows how to make iridium alloy plates. We do need to make some helium plasma, which you make with deuterium and helium-3. And then the deuterium is made from hydrogen in the industrial centrifuge. Hydrogen you can get from electrolyzed water, electrolyzed water you can get from industrial electrolyzing, just regular water, which is also completely fine. And then uh, the helium cell, the helium-3, we can get from endstone. Okay, so I might make that bit manually. Before we do really any of this, though, we do have to get one magical snow globe per... I, I think it's per, I don't know if you get this back, I assume it is used in the making of the, uh, the quantum quarry. Uh, so I assume we need one magical snow globe per quantum quarry that we make. And uh, the magical snow globe is made by grabbing a regular snow globe and taking it to all of the seven biomes listed right there on the on the tooltip. So thankfully, it's not too difficult to make. In fact, I think we might have most of the stuff required to make one of these. The only thing we might be missing is grass. We can, of course, request nether stars now. And then as for grass, we can make grass actually fairly easily. I was a little concerned we might not have leaves, but apparently uh, we have got a, a plethora of rubber leaves ready to go. And so I will make a couple of snow globes here, really as many as we can. Uh, can I make doors out of rubber wood? You cannot. Can I make doors out of wormwood? I also do not believe that we can. We cannot. So I think what we're going to have to do is uh, head on through to the overworld once again and chop down some of those spruce trees that we have lying around. 
kind of the first time we've actually had to uh, to use any of this wood. Up until now, we've got away with uh, we're just using regular old wormwood planks that we got right at the start. We could also look at putting like a um, some excavator modifiers on this, but I don't really think we're going to need that much wood uh, going forward here, or at least that much, you know, door making wood. I think for like for the most part, the wormwood uh, should do the trick. So boom and boom, we'll make as many of those as we can. And then let's see, I think I'll go with like four. You know what? I might as well make like six if we can. Yeah, I'll make six magical snow globes. I can't imagine we're going to make more than six quantum quarries. I don't even think we're going to make six. That seems like it might be overkill. But uh, just in case, we will uh, we'll take six nonetheless. So let me put all of these patterns into their correct interfaces here. So we have some that go directly into just molecular assemblers. And then the, uh, the popped chorus fruit wants to go into the electric furnace. Right there. So can I request six quantum quarry actuators now? I assume we're just missing the platinum. The stone burnt is being made and then yeah, 18 platinum. Okay, that is actually completely fine. The stone burnt we have, we'll throw that in the system. And then the platinum, we've got 34. Uh, our electric furnace down here, I do believe is pretty much instantaneous. So if we just throw it all uh, into here, that should very quickly get us all the platinum we need to request all of the uh, pickaxes for the quantum actuator. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and begin. All right. So now that we have the uh, actuators, let's grab our nature's compass. And I believe that most of the biomes that we're looking for here are like exclusive to the overworld. And we already have, actually, I guess one of them is not, and that's the end, right? Uh, the nether is also one of them. So you know what? Let's quickly just get the nether over and done with. That's going to tick that off the, uh, off the list there. I think the rest of the biomes are overworld exclusive. So we've done forest. We need hills, jungle, magical mountain, Ocean, plain, sandy, snowy, and swamp. Okay, so let's start with, we'll go in order, I guess. We'll start with hills. The fact that we have uh, creative flight here, do you reckon that any hills work? They must do, right? Surely like desert hills or extreme hills. I'll go with extreme hills. I think we should definitely go for like a, a default uh, Minecraft. You only need seven from the list. Ah, is there more than seven on the list? Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and hit start search. And then let's uh, head in the direction. This is of course made significantly easier uh, by the fact that we do have creative flight now. So as long as our uh, grid power doesn't unchunk load, which it shouldn't do, we should be able to, to fairly easily get this done. In fact, we're already in uh, extreme, oh no, we're searching for extreme hills, that's my bad. I was looking at the top left there and thinking we're already in extreme hills. Uh, so that was, I think extreme hills, just then we passed over it, right? So we've done mountain, hills, uh, plains and forests just by flying uh, in that direction there. So let's go for, let's look for magical. I don't know what magical means. So maybe we'll, we'll skip on magical. I'm being told we only need to do seven of these. Uh, let's go for swamp. We'll go deep. Oh no, we'll go swamp land. Again, I want to, I want to kind of try and stick to the ones that are vanilla Minecraft. I don't want to go to any modded biomes because I don't know if those are necessarily going to work. But of course we do pass through other biomes kind of as we're, you know, making our way to the biome that we're after. The snow globe has gathered enough information about our world and is now active. Well, that was actually fairly easy. We did end nether, hills, and swamp. And then apparently just as we passed through to those biomes, we went through enough biomes to, uh, to get it done. Nice. So, if we head on back home, and uh, if we wait the, uh, the requisite amount of time for our system to, uh, to come back online, we should be able to get our first quantum quarry up and running. Now, of course, as we found out before, if we're going to use P2P tunnels as a way of powering our quantum quarries, which I think we're going to do, we are going to hit, a, we're going to drastically increase the amount of power that our A2 system uses because it does have that like the 5% tax on, on all power it transfers. So it's going to get quite high, but I think that's actually probably completely fine. So let's see that if we can't make this uh, helium plasma. So let's begin by getting a ton of endstone dust again. I'd like to make six of these just in case, you know, just so we can make uh, six quarries if we want to. So let's get like a few stacks, I guess, of endstone dust, which we can get either by throwing our endstone to a pulverizer um, or the block that we're going to use, of course, is the uh, the crusher. So we'll request like a few hundred endstone here. We've got the uh, the resources to make it. And then if we just head on over to our grinder and grab that endstone, we should be able to, I think, fairly easily uh, get all of this, uh, all of this going. 
All right, so we'll run all of those uh, through here. Again, nice and quickly there. I'm very happy with, though, with how fast the grinder is. Once we have those, we then need to run that through the industrial centrifuge. We do have one, I believe. Yeah, this guy up here. Uh, for now, all that stuff's going to get pumped into the system, but again, that is completely fine. Do we have all the overclockers in there? We do indeed. Perfect. So uh, we'll get that going in, and then we might as well grab uh, the endstone dust that's already in there and begin running that through the centrifuge up here. Am I missing a uh, an ingredient there? Oh, I am, of course. We need empty cells as well. Boom. And there we go. That's six or seven. Helium-3 cells. Nice. We'll take those. And then if we want to make the uh, actual helioplasmum cell, we need the deuterium. If we want six deuterium, that means that we need 24 hydrogen, which means we need, oh gosh, it's a six to four ratio. So I think we need 36 electrolyzed water cells, which is 36 water cells, which we might already have. Yeah, we do. I'll take all 39 that we have, and we'll run those through the uh, industrial electrolyzer. That's going to make all of our electrolyzed water. From there, of course, we can then run that electrolyzed water again through the industrial electrolyzer and then take the hydrogen and run that through the centrifuge. Okay, that seems actually uh, very doable. So we'll take all you, run that through one more time. A lot slower this time around, but again, still perfectly fine. Actually, it's slower, but it does do multiple at a time, which is interesting. We'll grab the hydrogen that comes out of that. That's 24. Perfect. We'll run that through the centrifuge. And that should be basically everything, right? We then just need to grab the resultant deuterium. Hopefully we get six of it. And then we'll combine that up in the fusion control computer with our pre-existing helium-3. And then we should be, uh, should be good to go. Perfect. So this recipe, unlike the platinum recipe, actually gains power by the looks of it. Like this one says 130,000 FE per tick, whereas this one, negative 8.192k RF per tick. So... I do wonder if that means that we have to have space in here. Let's, let's try it. Oh, I guess we're always going to have space, right? Because it's, uh, it empties it out. Okay, interesting. It does also take quite a while. Can I, like, take that up? Oh, I can. And it produces more, more power. That's interesting. Again, the size 7 one there is uh, the same amount of coils, so you can just click the up button there, uh, make it faster without having to, uh, to add anything extra to it. So we should get our first uh, helium plasma momentarily here. Uh, while we wait, let's request those uh, iridium alloy plates. Uh, again, we might as well request, I guess, 26 of these, just in case we do make, our 24 would be the correct number, but 26 is also uh, greater than 24, uh, just in case we end up wanting to make six of them. Everything else we should already have. We've got the magical snow, uh, snow globes, and we've got the stone burnt. So how are you doing? You are... Done. Perfect. All right, let's see. Do we have what it takes to make our first quantum quarry? We should just as soon as... Let's cancel the platinum there. Uh, just as soon as this recipe here is done. My goodness, that... <laughs> I didn't quite realize how big of a craft I'd scheduled there. That is, uh, that is quite something. But again, it does seem to be going pretty quickly, actually. Boom and boom. Nice. There's our quantum tunneling quest complete. And we should also now have the quantum quarry actuators as well nice so let's grab a couple of p2p tunnels with our power card uh, we do want to make sure that the uh, memory card there is linked to here right now i believe it's linked to a different uh channel and then from there i do want to check real quick how we're doing on channels here because that is going to determine where i end up putting this uh this quantum quarry or at least the first one so we're using seven out of eight channels going up which means we can put our first quantum quarry, like, up here, I guess. Sure. So I believe the way this works is we uh, we built something that looks a little bit... Oh, you can't put the uh, the quantum quarry actuators down. That's a little interesting. You have to put down the uh, the quantum quarry first and then place the uh, actuators onto it, which is a little awkward. It means I can't place this one here without uh, breaking the floor first. There we go. So, uh, in here, you'll see we have uh, power. It can hold up to uh, 200,000 redstone flux, which is interesting. It does you 20,000 RF per tick, so that's uh, surprisingly low, actually. We can put in a filter, an enchanted book, and a biome marker. So, I think we are going to want to put a filter in there. Uh, do we have any filters lying around? We do. And I think we're going to want to, like, blacklist... 
Uh, obviously, in an ideal world, I'd love to whitelist mana infused ore. Um, I don't think that you can like drag from over here. You can't. So I don't know if we can get mana infused ore into the whitelist until we actually get our first piece of mana infused ore. For now, though, we're probably going to want to blacklist certain, uh, certain things. Because, for example, if I were to do this and this and connect this up, it's going to instantly start uh, generating. Uh, also, I think we do want a, a chest, actually, to, uh, to store some of the wares here. I think you can put the chest anywhere, by the way. Uh, but you'll see it just starts to fill up with uh, with random trash. Basically, just stuff that you would find if you were mining out a uh, an entire dimension. So uh, things like cobblestone and dirt and spruce and limestone and marble. We don't want any of those. So we can add things like that to the blacklist. And at that point, it's going to stop making those, which is uh, exactly what we want. Uh, for now, I would like to throw all of those into a trash can. Like that. There's also the option of an enchanted book. What do you think? Do we want to get like efficiency five? Is efficiency five going to make this faster? I assume right now this is pulling 20,000 RF per tick. And I assume if we were to add like efficiency five, would that increase the power usage? Let's have a look. So right now, if we get our network tool, we're using 2,000 RF per tick on the, uh, on the quantum quarry there, which makes sense. You know, we're using 20,000 uh, RF per tick on the, uh, on the quarry itself. And so 5% of that is, uh, is like 1,000, right? So, and that's on top of the normal 1,000 that our system uses. I do want to see if we get an efficiency 5 book, does that uh, 1,000 go up? So uh, if we want to get efficiency 5, we can do that, of course, in our enchanter with a book and quill, a redstone, and a lapis. It's actually a very... Uh, easy recipe. Do we have a book and quill lying around? Of course we do not. That would be far too easy. Uh, however, we do have basically everything else, I think, that we need to, uh, to get that going. Or at least we can make everything else we need to get that going. I will get some uh, rotten flesh here. Make some leather. That gets us the book. And then from there, uh, we need a feather, which uh, is kind of where Yuyu Matter would come, in, uh, would come in handy here. Of course, we can make uh, our own feathers the old-fashioned way with the, uh, the paper here and the crafting table. Boom. And then redstone and a lapis. Let's throw both of those in here. Uh, it does require 33 levels, but again, that is not a problem given all of the extraterrestrial matter that we have here. Perfect. Efficiency five. And then let's see. So once again, I'm, I'm going to do a quick check uh, down in the rainbow room just to see if we're still using 2000 RF per tick. We are indeed. So if we head on back up to here, and if we put in the efficiency book and the dilithium here is actually very useful as well. I do believe we need that going forward. That did take a bunch of power out of there. So I'm assuming that did work. How much are we using now? Yeah, we're up to 7,000. Wow. So now this machine is using, like the, the network is using 6 6,200 RF per take, which is 5%. So if we divide that by five and multiply that by 100, where I believe that the quantum quarry is using 125-ish thousand redstone flux per tick, which is totally fine. Like we can handle that. And I do hope it's going many times faster. The uh, dilithium here is used in uh, the making of these, uh, of the dilithium dust, which is then used in the making of uh, some of the items from advanced rocketry. I think we might need the dilithium crystals. Potentially. And there's our, oh, that's platinum ore, which I guess is, is, is good. We do want platinum ore because then that saves us having to, uh, you know, make platinum with the uh, fusion controller going forward. But uh, ideally, of course, we're looking for mana infused ore now. I have no idea how long that's going to take. I also don't know if there's like a, a biome that is good for this. You can, if you want, put a biome marker in there. So uh, the way you make a biome marker is fairly easy, but then once you have, it, it starts out blank, uh, you take it to the biome that you want, you right click, and it'll become a specific biome marker, at which point you could put it in the quantum quarry and it will just mine in that one biome, right? So uh, for example, we could get like the hell biome uh, or the end biome, and at that point it would start pumping out uh, you know, things that you would find in the end or in the nether. 
suppose I don't know if, I don't think that mana infused all spawns anywhere in particular. It might spawn in like the magic biome, for example, but I have actually, like, I have no idea. So I think we just have to wait. While we wait for this to, uh, to chug along, chat, one thing that I have been wanting to do for a little while here is uh, upgrade our wireless crafting terminal. Because you can, if we type in uh, terminal here, the AE2 wireless terminals mod, which is what the uh, wireless crafting terminal is from. Oh, no, that's from wireless crafting terminals too. This one's from a different mod. It adds the wireless ultimate terminal, which is a wireless interface terminal, a wireless crafting terminal, and a wireless pattern terminal all in one. So we've already got the wireless crafting terminal, but up until now, we've been coming over here for our patterns and over here for our interfaces. I would like to get both of these kind of off the wall and into my, my wireless terminal. And I believe the way that we do that is simply by making the pattern terminal, making the wireless interface terminal, and then just crafting them all, like crafting all three of them together. So I'm going to grab both of these because I assume that they are needed in the actual uh, craft here. And then let's see, do we have what it takes to make a wireless interface terminal? I think we probably should be able to make one of these. Let's request a few interfaces. And then what else do we need? We need Fluix Pearls, which again, don't seem too bad, but we do need Fluix Dust. So let's request like 100 Fluix Dust. And then just to be safe, I'll also request like a, another 100 Fluix Crystals. We'll have those ready to go. What else do we need here? We need some Quartz Fiber, which hopefully we already have. We do. We also need some formation and annihilation cores, which again, shouldn't be too difficult. We should have uh, logic processors ready to go. Uh, quartz glass, I'm assuming we already have, but if not, we can request some more. And the good thing, of course, about having so many uh, crafting CPUs now is that we can do like all of these crafts simultaneously. And so I can request, you know, 30 or 20, yeah, 30 formation cores and 30 annihilation cores. And they should just get made fairly quickly, which is real nice. Uh, let's get... A few of these. Let's get, I guess, two of these. And then therefore, by extension, two wireless terminals if we can. Uh, we do need so many dense energy cells. Did I teach my system how to make these? I did. So we need like 16, I think. Yes, I believe that's correct for two dense energy cells. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, these never uh, shift click in. So we are going to have to put those in manually, but that is fine. We do have our first bits of mana infused ore here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to grab another filter. I'm going to set this to whitelist, platinum and mana. And I'm going to swap out the filter here. That way we can take out basically everything else in here. And for now, I'll just dump that all into the uh, the system. Actually, no, we should. Uh, we should also whitelist the, uh, the lithium ore actually. Okay, I'm going to make a new filter. We're going to change this one. Whitelist. Mana infused, platinum, and dilithium. And then we'll swap those out. There we go. So going forward, these should be the only things that we get. These three ores here. I'm pretty sure they're all we're actually after. All right, where were we? So uh, do we have what it takes to make two dense energy cells now? Uh, we do. Nice. So I'll make two of you. Beautiful. And I'll keep these in here because I don't think they uh, shift click in for whatever reason. And then we'll make two of you and i guess for this we need oh we do need two regular emmy terminals that again should be perfectly fine that should get us two regular wireless terminals from there we can then craft one of those up into a wireless interface terminal and we can craft the other one up into a wireless pattern terminal nice at that point i think we can then just begin to craft these together to get the wireless ultimate terminal. Right now you'll see it has the interface terminal and crafting terminal uh, modules. And if we add this guy as well, we get the full Monty of all of the modules. So we'll stick that back in here. And then now if I go to open my terminal, I'm hopeful that we have, yeah, like a little switch terminals button here. So we can switch between, and I don't know why it pulls, it pulls my mouse down like over here. Left click wireless crafting terminal, Right-click wireless pattern terminal. So this is the wireless crafting terminal. Left-click wireless pattern terminal. Oh, no, okay. So let's see. If we go... Oh, wait. We're in the wireless crafting terminal. If I right-click, it says wireless pattern terminal. That's correct. If I left-click, it takes me to the wireless crafting terminal. I have no idea how we get to the wireless interface terminal.
also, this would appear to not be all of my stuff. Or maybe it is, but it's not. Uh, left click wireless crafting terminal. Please order by number of items. Um, I would like you to order by number of items. No, you don't understand. Number of items, please. It does appear to be a little bit buggy, maybe. We can get to the pattern terminal, which is good. Like we can use that wirelessly. Uh, we can't use the wireless craft. Well, we can use the wireless crafting terminal here, which I guess is nice. Let me just check. It does have all the modules in, right? Yeah, it says it has all the modules in. For whatever reason, it doesn't like organizing by by number of items here. It, it, it seems very much uh, hell bent on on organizing by the alphabetical order. I'll have to look into that and see if that's like a, like maybe we can update the model or something and get this to uh, to work. Either way, how are we doing on mana infused ore? We're getting there. We got seven mana infused off, or eight mana infused off, fourteen platinum, and then twenty two uh, dilithium. I think we can set up another one of these. Chat. Boom, boom, boom. There's another efficiency five book. Let's throw that in up here and really start taxing our uh, our power system. We're now using 13,000 RF per tick just, you know, through like a P2P text. We're just deleting 13,000 RF per tick for the, for the privilege of using these P2P tunnels here, which is, uh, which is quite something. But yeah, I think that's basically going to hopefully, eventually, uh, get us enough mana infused ore for us to progress with. Do we, uh, do we get double if we uh, run this through like a sag mill? We totally do, yeah, and I assume we could run it through the mechanical squeezer as well to potentially get uh, get triple even. So, uh, you know, we could get uh, potentially up to like 48 mana infused ore uh, from the 16 mana infused ingots here. Also, oh, uh, 48 mana infused ingots uh, from the uh, 16 mana infused ore there. Um, and again, it's only certain items, but it's mostly the items that we need to make like rockets and satellites. Uh, if we look at the satellite recipe, we need six mana infused plates there. And in fact, if I just press U, uh, you can see we need it for the liquid fuel engine. I do believe we're going to need multiple of these like per rocket. And we also need multiple uh, for our space station as well, which I think we do need uh, if we want to uh, warp to another uh, another planet, which is kind of the last uh, the last quest here. Okay, so we can, mm, if we hold this, like you can right click and then select the interface that you want. That does make it a bit more awkward. And then if you select it properly, you can do the whole number of items thing. Like if you hold it and use it, it's just if you try and use the uh, the hotkey to open it, like I used to do, where I just I press Z and uh, and it opened it from my bobble slot. That's when it kind of uh, kind of breaks, or at least doesn't work as well. Oh, now it's back. Excuse me. Or maybe I just had to right. Maybe I had to right click it to kind of activate it, and now it seems to be working. Left click for interface terminal. Uh, right click for a while. Oh well, the server's gonna restart there, but uh, I think it's working. Chat. I think that is now working as intended. So uh, I'm hopeful that that's going to work when I come back. All right. Yeah, we'll come back in the next stream and we'll see how much mana infused ore we have. Hopefully we'll have a chest full of platinum, mana infused ore, and dilithium, and we can get started with advanced rocketry. Uh, for the remainder of today's stream, let's have a look at some of the other quests here that we've yet to complete. Uh, for example, we do have the something out of a nothing quest. It turns out you can create a way richer substance with those scraps you've recycled earlier. You name it Yuyu Matter. With it, you can get your hands on large quantities of rare ores a lot quicker now. Craft a matter fabricator. I don't think we strictly need a matter fabricator. I am going to make one <laughs> because it's a uh, it's a quest here. So I will teach our system uh, how to make this because we already know how to make most of the stuff here, like the uh, the energy flow circuits and uh, the highly advanced machine frames. In fact, maybe it's not worth it, actually. Maybe what I should do, because we probably don't need to teach our system how to make, uh, is it electrolyzers right there? Extractors, sorry. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll request for energy flow circuits. And in fact, we already have three of the floor, uh, three of the floor. We already have three of the four ready to go. So I'll request that fourth one. Uh, I will teach my system how to make the Lapatron energy orb because it already knows how to make Lapatron crystals and how to make uh, those iridium plates. So if we stick that in one of our interfaces, did that go in? It did. At that point, we should be able to request the, uh, the Lapatron energy orb. Nice. And we can also request the highly advanced machine frames as well. We'll take two of those, please. Beautiful. 
At that point, I think I'll manually make the electrolyzers here, as the extractors here, because they seem easy enough. And then at that point, I think even though we don't strictly need it, I think it could come in useful uh, for us to have a UU matter slash matter fabricator setup uh, that allows us to uh, you know, to use the UU matter when we want to craft certain items, right? For example, just a moment ago, we needed feathers. It would be a lot nicer to have a, a stash of UU matter that we can turn into feathers with a quick auto craft, as opposed to having to get paper, turn it into mana infused paper, shift right click that paper, put it into slots five, eight, two, six, seven, two, five, and then, you know, have and then shift right click to get the feather, right? That's a, a tedious process that ideally we don't want to have to go through uh, every single time that we need a um, a feather. Instead, it'd be much more ideal if we could just use the old uh, matter fabricator here. So if we're going to do that, the best course of action, of course, is to grab the recycler and we have to pump something into the recycler to generate scrap. And then we take the scrap from the recycler and pump that into the matter fabricator um, with, I think, 4,096 redstone flux per tick to produce UU matter. My first question is, where in the world do I want to put this? And I think that we might as well kind of put it up here, given that we already have this line of machines going. I think we'll have our recycler right about there, and then we'll have next to it the matter fabricator, like so. We'll hook both of those up um, with power. And then I think all we really want to do here is just pump as much cobblestone as we can into the recycler. I am a little concerned that the energy conduit here that we have might not be good enough. However, I guess what we could do if we wanted to is, uh, first of all, our energy conduits are in here. Uh, we could hook up the recycler with the regular energy conduit. Yeah. Because I don't think this uses too much power. And then we could hook up the matter fabricator with a, a P2P tunnel, right? We could put something like that down. Uh, we're not going to be auto crafting with this, I don't think. Like, not directly with the matter fabricator. So I think that is actually fine. And then, like I said, what we want to do then is we want to pump cobblestone as fast as is humanly possible into the recycler. And it might be the case that we want to get, like, a second recycler, maybe? Let's have a look. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a bucket of water and a bucket of lava. And much like our cobblestone generator upstairs, we're going to set up another cobblestone generator uh, down here. But this time around, I think we are going to uh, to put in significantly more speed upgrades, uh, as well as maybe some stack upgrades to really increase the uh, the speed at which we are generating cobblestone and pumping that cobblestone out. Uh, where is my water at? I guess the easiest or nearest bit of water is... Back here, actually? Yeah, we'll take you. And then, uh, do we have any lava? We do. Is there a bucket's worth in there? There is not. There is just shy of a bucket's worth. So in that case, chat, let's quickly head on through uh, to the nether and try and grab a bucket of lava. So we'll do cobblestone, water, and lava. Exact same as before. Uh, then we'll grab a transfer node, which hopefully we have lying around. We do indeed as well as a transfer pipe. And this is kind of where I'm thinking of actually using a uh, another P2P tunnel on the recycler as well, actually, because I don't believe we can cover these pipes, and we'd have to have one here if we uh, if we powered the recycler from the back. So you know what? Yeah, let me grab another P2P tunnel. Do we have one? No. We can craft a new one, though, and place it down right about there. I assume we're still doing all right on channels here. One, two, three, four. F yeah, we should be fine. There we go. So they should both be linked, at which point we can then do this. And if we grab one more pipe, and by grab, I mean, of course, craft one more pipe. And ignore the 28 that I already had in my inventory. We can go boom and boom. And that uh, should, as soon as we put the mining upgrade in there, begin producing cobblestone and pumping that cobblestone into the recycler. Now, of course, we want to make that a lot faster. And I think we might actually go so far as to start looking at the next tier of speed upgrades, those being the magical tier of speed upgrades. Uh, oh, sorry, the uh, ultimate tier of speed upgrades. Magical are the ones that we have uh, in our machine over there, in our resonator over there. So uh, do we have what it takes to make one of you? We do indeed. Fantastic. So that's going to start very slowly producing cobblestone and sending that cobblestone over here, turning it into scrap, and then hopefully that scrap will get turned into, uh, into UU matter. Uh, we do want to make sure that the back here is set to input. 
and that the uh, output is set to auto eject on the right. And then here we want to do the same thing. We want to make sure the, the left is set to input. And then we'll probably set the output on the right as well. We'll probably put like a maybe a storage drawer here with a uh, storage bus on it so we can access the UMATA from the system. Let's see if we can't make faster speed upgrades. Actually, let's start by testing out like how quick the uh, the cobblestone is if we just put in the 16 ultimate speed upgrades here. Oh, sorry, the 16 magical speed upgrades here. I'll get those right one day, chat. If I put these in here, how fast does that get? And we don't want that going into there, but it's not going to anywhere. That's fine. It gets a little faster, but not crazy fast. And so I do think I would like to try and get some ultimate speed upgrades. These require evil infused ingots, drops of evil, and then ultimate upgrades. Do we have drops of evil? We've got 42 drops of evil, which means we can make 10 ultimate speed upgrades, which is less than ideal. Uh, do we have the Wither Skeleton data model? We do, right? And it's not running right now. This does get us drops of evil, right? Or we can make drops of evil with it. We can't. Hmm. That is unfortunate, chat. That is very unfortunate. It means that if we want to get drops of evil, we're going to have to manually kill Wither Skeletons, which I don't really want to have to do. Stack upgrades will not help here, I do not believe. Like, stack upgrades are good for moving, um, a stack, but uh, you cannot, like a stack upgrade would not help here. The stack upgrade would help if this was filling up like and moving slowly, but it's not. Uh, you can attach multiple nodes to the one cobblestone. Ooh, that's a good point actually. Yeah, I'd not thought about that. We can, I guess if we want to put multiple transfer nodes on that one piece of cobblestone, right? We could have one underneath, one at the top. And then if we move it back by one, we could also have one on the side as well, right? For a total of, uh, of four on the one piece of cobblestone. That seems very sensible. And given that it's not going to be too difficult, I don't think, for us to make more of the magical speed upgrades, that seems imminently sensible. Sure. So, what I'm thinking is I'm thinking we'll move this back by one. Let's uh, take all these out. And yeah, I'm going to put the... Let's also grab some more endstone, I guess. I'm thinking we'll have the lava and water here. So we'll do, and again, we've destroyed our cobblestone thanks to our auto smelt pick, but that's fine. We'll do once again, uh, water and lava. And the chat has requested quite uh, politely uh, that I cover up the lava so there's, uh, so as not to die, which, you know, shows how much faith they have in me as a, uh, as a Minecraft player, but that's okay. And then we'll put a, a transfer on each available side of the cobblestone here. Each one of those does require a mining upgrade, which uh, hopefully we should have what it takes to make. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Perfect. And yeah, like I said, I don't think a stack upgrade does anything, so that's not uh, really worth it. So I'll have one, two, three, four. Each one is going to have a stack of speed upgrades with a mining upgrade. And again, you can't put more than one of those in there. That is fine. So, now they all have speed and mining upgrades in them. All we have to do is connect them up to the right places. So let's do something like this and have it all connect up like that. Now that is going, it seems to be pumping in faster than the recycler can handle, which is fine. We can, of course, make uh, the overclocker upgrades. So let's see, overclocker upgrades, of course, require do we have what it takes? Oh, we do. Perfect. Beautiful. I was not expecting that, but that is A-OK. -okay. And there we go. So hopefully that's going a good deal faster now. And uh, we shouldn't have that in there. It is. So it looks like we are kind of uh, maxing out the recycler here, even with all of the overclock upgrades. So this is kind of as fast as you can get with the one recycler. We could, of course, make another recycler, but uh, I don't really think it's going to be necessary, chat, right? Um, the, the base is chunk loaded, so... Uh, between now and tomorrow, when the next stream happens, this will uh, continue to produce UU Matter. Uh, all we need to do is actually uh, find a place to store that UU Matter. And uh, I will put down another cache just to stay in, in theme. We do have a cache over there holding all of our sand. So we'll, we'll throw a cache down right about there. We'll make sure this is set to output on the right, like so. And then we will uh, go ahead and shift right click to lock that. And if we grab a storage bus, 
we should then be able to access all of that UU matter from inside the system. Nice. So at that point, uh, do we have what it takes to make an uh, upgrade kit? Not that I necessarily think we need it. Uh, I do believe we can request Invar now, which is always very nice, uh, but that will increase our capacity. I think right now it can hold 20,000 UU matter. Although maybe that's not right. Maybe it's 20,000 once you put in uh, the hardened upgrade kit. I don't remember actually. And then maybe it's uh, 80,000 once you get up to the reinforced. Either way, we can hold a lot of UU matter. And essentially, uh, real quick, do we have any facades? We do, beautiful. I'll cover up uh, these right here. And we'll also grab one more cobblestone just to cover up the uh, hole in the wall right there. Perfect. Uh, but yeah, now what we can do, chat, of course, is we can uh, open up our pattern terminal. And uh, if we want, we can begin teaching our system how to uh, how to use that UU matter, right? If we look at the recipes that UU matter can make, um, I don't know if like logs and stone are going to be particularly useful, but uh, you know, we could teach a grass for example, just in case we need that. Um, I don't see us needing a lot of grass going forward, but uh, we might as well. We've got a lot of crafting storage, so we'll, uh, we'll you know, teach it that anyway. There are some more, some slightly more useful ones. For example, obsidian is, uh, is hopefully going to be pretty useful. No longer do we have to head back over to the, uh, the end dragon. If we want obsidian, we can just request it. Uh, glass we're making. Uh, glowstone, we have automated. Cocoa beans we don't need yet. Uh, cactus I'll do. You know, we could have automated cactus with um, growth fairly easily. But now, if we need slime, we can do that, you know, not too bad. Snowballs, clay, we already have. Uh, Gunpowder, we already have automated. Bones, we already have automated. Let's do feathers. We'll encode those. I will also do uh, ink sacks, because black dye is the thing that we uh, do have a little bit of right now, but uh, it would be nice to be able to just request that more easily going forward. What else we got? Enderpearls and coal were pretty good on. Uh, ores and gems were also pretty good on. Uh, we could teach it tungsten and iridium, just as a, as, but I, again, I think we're fairly good on those for the most part. Lead, uh, aluminum, and then tin and titanium. So I think that's fine. We could also, in the future, if we need it, teach our system how to use the fluid replicator to make fluids from UU matter. Right now, I don't necessarily think we do need it. But uh, for example, if we wanted to uh, fully automate the rainbow generator, which I know is something uh, people have been asking for for a little while now, uh, you know, we do have to get infinite lava for the, magma, uh, for the magmatic generator and for the heated redstone generator. And doing that with UU matter would be quite easy, right? We could make more recyclers maybe uh, if we needed more UU matter, but then we could have infinite lava being pumped over uh, into these, uh, these generators here. The machine structure here actually doesn't look too bad. It requires uh, some iron rods, which are very easy to make. And then a highly advanced machine frame. And boom, 16 machine structure. Nice. And that is that quest as well taken care of. So really chat, all we have left to do now is a couple of, of rogue quests in the, uh, the back end here. Uh, the excavator is a big old multi-block that I, I guess I'll make for the sake of completion, but we really don't need it. Uh, LPG, we should be able to get. In fact, I assume we have a ton of the stuff. We do indeed. I don't think that I can grab it out of there, unfortunately. Uh, but what I should be able to do is I'm assuming we're also backing up on LPG over here. Yeah, we totally are. So if I grab a tank, preferably an empty tank, and we put it down like right uh, here, that should hopefully start to fill up with LPG. And there we go. That's that quest complete. Perfect. We can then get rid of that uh, tank there. It's not necessary. And yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll fight. We'll uh, try and get a wither data model. We are gonna have to kill six withers for that, but that seems very doable. Uh, like I said, the excavator is a big multi-block, so a lot of steel, but we should already have it. Uh, the advanced biome scanner. Is that something we can make? Do we have the regular biome scanner? Doesn't look like we do. A block of sapphire is easy enough. A biome marker for planes, and then a basic biome mar <laughs> marker, a biome scanner, empty map and then a basic biome scanner, and the basic biome scanner is, is a whole bunch of other stuff. I do believe we have a basic biome scanner, but I have actually no idea where I've put it. Uh, the data model just needs the craft, you don't need the matter. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Wither data model. Oh yeah, the uh, the recipe for the wither, uh, wither data model is actually uh, just, just that. It's just a recipe. We don't actually have to fight the, uh, the withers for it. And given that we already have all of the uh, stuff there, Automated, right? We already have the automation of, of nether stars and whatnot. So I don't really think that we need to uh, 
to really bother too much with uh, getting the Wither Data model. All we need here is a piece of redstone to right-click onto our block of coal. It is true that our system is full here, which is less than ideal. And boom, there we go, nice. So that is uh, quantum simulation also complete. That is fantastic. So the biome scanner doesn't appear to be too difficult. We do need a uh, another basic capacitor. Those are fairly easy at this point. The uh, CCB here also doesn't seem too bad. We might have to, uh, for the first time in a while, mix uh, whatever a clay board is. Let's make a few of these. Now significantly easier than they were at the start of the pack. That should get us the uh, the old CCB. We do have to smelt that, but that is completely fine. And then there we go. There we get the basic biome scanner. Nice. So if we want to upgrade that to advanced, which again, I don't think we need. The whole point of the biome scanner is it can scan a large area for when you're regenerating chunks. But for the most part, I don't really think this is too useful. Um, I know the pack didn't used to have the nature's compass. So I think at that point it could have been, uh, you know, usable. But at this stage in the pack, when you have the nature's compass, I don't think these are really that necessary. So if we're going to upgrade it to, a, uh, to basic, we need, I think we did this as well, right? Maybe I think I seem to remember doing this and getting the hell biome marker. We need solder, an empty map and a biome marker for hell. And then the advanced is the block of sapphire with a biome marker for planes. So we need two biome markers, uh, which require some purple dye. So two empty biome markers. We need to go through to the nether for one of them to get the hell marker, like so, and planes, nice. So that should be everything. We do have a little bit of solder already in here. So if we put in the hell, the biome scanner, and then the blank map, was it? An empty map, yeah, which is just a compass and some paper. The compass, of course, just being iron and redstone. So that is fairly easy for us to do. That's gonna take a, a quick second there, but that is a-okay. I'll grab some uh, of our rogue speed upgrades. And then uh, we are going to have to empty out the solder here because the next tier requires redstone. The advanced one, that is. Yeah, we need uh, the block of sapphire, which we have, the basic biome scanner, the planes marker, and then uh, destabilized redstone, which we can do. Let's uh, reconnect this guy. Let's go ahead and put in 10 redstone. And uh, we'll take out the sand as well for now. We've got enough uh, clear glass. So I'll throw you in. We do need some more lava in there, but that is fine. Like I said, once that is done, we will uh, break and replace this. That is a bit of a waste of solder, but that's fine. I don't think we're going to be needing it too much going forward. Perfect. So uh, we're going to set you to extract just as soon as the redstone is placed on the bottom there. And that is good to go. Extract, always active. And that is now full. So if we put in the basic biome scanner, the sapphire block, and the biome marker, as well as, of course, those uh, pesky speed upgrades. And there we go. Look at that. Advanced scanning complete. Nice. So that is uh, tier one and almost all of tier two taken care of. We are going to have to come back to that mass excavator because um, although I don't think it's going to be too difficult to make it, it's going to be a little bit tedious and uh, require a lot of crafting. Uh, but basically, all we have left to do now is advanced rocketry, uh, crafting ourselves a rocket, getting a space station, giving that space station the ability to warp to other galaxies, and then hopefully traveling on the long journey home and finding a familiar place for the end quest there, as well as getting a couple of, of satellites, maybe some armor and a fueling station along the way. But uh, we're pretty close, chat, I think, to the uh, to the end of this pack. It's been a good time, but uh, that is why I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream for now.